Hello, everybody. Um, sorry, I'm like just get my computer set up. My name is Sarah Glavansky, um, and I am an occupational therapist. I've been practicing for about 15 years now. Mostly my practice has been in school-based area. I worked at a private school for children with significant disabilities as well as in public school. I also have experience working at long-term rehab. So I kind of jack of all trades. I've been in a little bit of everything. Um, my favorite, of course, is the school-based. Um, so tonight, I wanted to share with you some of the ideas that I have done within my practice um, as a school-based therapist. A lot of the things that I was doing at school was stuff that Therapro had offered, and I thought that it was a really good idea if I showed you kind of some of the things that I have found that is on Therapro's website, um, just so you kind of know where to get it and how I use it. Um, just so you have a little bit more background too about me, I at one point in time had my own caseload and I did all of my own therapies. I did the, the treatments and the notes and the meetings all on my own. Um, now I'm supervising a, a coder at this point, so I get to kind of have the best of both worlds. I get to see her working with the kids and step in when I need to, um, as well as still being able to do the testing and that piece of, of our lovely profession as well. Um, so with no further ado, I'll jump into this. I hope that some of you saw my first webinar last year about this. Um, this time I kind of took a more, a, a less homemade route and more of a, a practical route as to things that you would be able to find um, at therapro.com. So the learning objectives for tonight are for you to be able to identify two new treatment ideas. Um, for students who have fine motor weaknesses, two new treatment ideas with people who have visual perceptual weaknesses, and understand the role of occupational therapy in the school as well. Um, I know that most of you listening tonight are school-based therapists, so that'll be uh, a help that you kind of already know the role of, a, of our profession within the school, but some of you who are not will be able to see some of the things that I use in, in practice, and hopefully those of you that have been practicing kind of get a, an idea or two of new tasks or activities that you can do um, with your students from your caseload. So uh, without further ado, the first section um, that I'm gonna talk about tonight is life skills. Uh, I did a lot of life skills when I was in the specialty school with kids that had um, significant disabilities that couldn't be housed in a public school. So they had, um, had an outer district placement to be at these schools. So these are some of the things that I used to help me when I was doing that. Um, daily activities of daily living manual. I love this manual. Um, it is a, a bound book that has all sorts of activities within it. One of the great things about this is that the activities inside are all photocopyable. So anything that you find in here that you like to use with the kids, you can copy it as many times as you need to, give it out to as many people as you need to. It has objectives on it um, that you can use to help write your goals so you can actually measure things using some of the activities that are in here. And the Activities of Daily Living book go through every aspect of Activities of Daily Living. So there's laundry skills, um, leisure skills, nutrition, hygiene, money man management. So it incorporates kids that have are, are low functioning and really need kind of those basic skills as well as the higher functioning kids that um, can do some of the more um, pre-vocational skills. The sample page that I have up on the screen for you is available on therapro.com. This is a leisure skills page and it just shows some time management piece. Um, so the kids can actually see how much time they're spending doing each activity, whether it be at school, at work, doing their homework, doing their chores, whatever it is, it's a great activity for a little bit of a higher level child to be able to visually see how much time they're actually spending on different activities that they're doing. Um, but like I said before, this, this book has great um, copyable activities for you to be able to, to pull out. Um, one of the things that I would do with the students at my first school is, Go out into the community. So this gives activities that you can practice going out into the community with. So they have the skills that they're able to do before, such as food shopping. Food shopping is a life skill for some of these, well, for everybody, but some of the people have to be taught explicitly how to do them. Um, this book goes through higher level tasks like shopping to lower level tasks. Um, 
as well, Zip, zipping, buttoning, those type of things. So I'll show you the front of this one more time. Um, activities of daily living, a manual of group activities and written exercises. Take a Definitely take a look at this one. When you're working with some of the kids, you don't always have them in individual sessions either. So these activities can be done as a single activity with just one person, or if you have the big group, it's able to be um, kind of gone through with multiple people in the group at the time. So definitely take a look at this manual. It was a lifesaver um, for me when I was doing those life skills with some of the lower level kids that I encountered. Um, I forgot to mention before, but if you have any questions about anything, please type them into the questions tab. Um, and I will definitely go back to anything at the end if you have questions or if there's anything that you know that Sarah Pro offers that I don't touch upon tonight, please ask about the questions in the, the question box. And at the end, I'll definitely answer any questions that I can about um, whatever products that you might already know about. The next um, piece of equipment that I love from Therapro that I work that I used when I was working with some of those lower level skilled kids is the I Can Work program. This curriculum breaks everything down really well. Um, it was, it's a five module program and it breaks everything down into different parts for you. The curriculum is wonderful to work through kind of from the beginning to the end. And it, one of the things that I love the most about this is that it broke it down into about 45 minute sessions. So you were able to get the whole activity done in 45 minutes. Um, this again is something that you can do as an individual session or as a, a larger group um, session. Um, it's a whole curriculum. So when you get, if you if you purchase the I Can Work curriculum, it's great because everything is included for you. You can go from the beginning to the end and the kids get all of the pro, uh, pre-vocational training that, that they could need. This particular curriculum is geared towards the kids in the older end. So middle school, high school, um, who really need that pre-vocational skills. Um, lower elementary, preschool, this program is not you can use it for them, but it's not geared towards them. So it's definitely a, a higher level, a higher age level um, curriculum for the, the kids that we work with. Here are some sample pages that you can get right off the website as well. So the iWork curriculum has all of these activities that you can reproduce right in them. Um, it comes with a CD and the PDF. So you can reproduce them as many times as you want. I know sometimes some of these skills take multiple exposures before the kids are able to get them. So it's great that you can have that ability to just reprint another one. Um, and as I said before, the it's the whole curriculum. So you get everything from the beginning to the end when you buy the I Can Work curriculum. Um, again, when I was working in that school for kids that had more significant disabilities, this was a great one because it was something that we could do for the entire school year and it, it carried us through the, the whole time. The next um, book that I use all the time is Self-Care with Flair. And I know that I mentioned this one in my last webinar also, but I love this because Self-Care with Flair has um, all sorts of pictures that the kids are able to relate to. They're simple pictures, they have rhymes that go along with them, and this is definitely a book that you're teaching the kids the skills. So they don't have any of the self-help skills and you can use these activities and songs to really get um, get down to the kids and have them be be successful. Um, so it goes anything from dressing, there's a whole shoe tying thing. I know that shoe tying can be a real um, kind of sticking point for some of the, some of the kids who need um, help with that. And I know the teachers love when you can teach a kid to tie the shoe so, because they're not asking 8,000 times to have their shoe tied. So I like, this is a handout that I give out to a lot of the teachers that I work with, especially in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, when the kids are constantly asking, can you tie my shoe, can you tie my shoe? Um, the language in it is nice and simple so the kids are able to follow it. Um, this book goes through all of the self-care tasks that you would need um, to be able to function in a school setting. So it's really nice. Um, the other thing that I like about this is the pictures are really simple. So the kids aren't gonna be distracted by the pictures that are seen in the in the manual. So it gives them a nice way to be able to go through it. So in the grooming section of this book, for example, washing and drying your face, washing and drying your hands, super important, especially now with COVID going around, um, brushing your teeth, flossing your teeth, brushing long hair and combing short hair are all part of the grooming session of this. Um, the book has dressing, grooming, toilet training, and eating all as part of it. So this is a really good one if you have some of those life skill kids that 
especially the younger ones that just don't have it, or some of the older ones who should have learned it but didn't. It breaks it down in a nice way that they are able to follow it um, and can follow through with it in across settings. So that's um, self-care with flair. This is another example of one of the pages that can be found on the Pro's website. It just goes through, um, this one is putting your coat on over your head. I know that sometimes this flip method is used in a lot of the classrooms with some of the typically developing kids as well. So it's nice that you have to have that kind of visual that goes along with it. The next piece of cell of ADLs is functional hand. I'm not sure how many of you have ever heard of this before, but this is a, a great tool that's universal and can be used across settings for just about anything. As you can see in the pictures here, it goes from an eating aid for holding forks and spoons to a, a, a crayon marker um, stylus aid. If the, the child that you're working with doesn't have the ability to grip those um, pieces of equipment, this tool is wonderful to being able to include them in all of the, the activities that happen within the classroom. So it's got a, a bungee cord on it, so it's adjustable. So you can adjust the size of whatever tool that you need to put in. You put the tool in it, you pull the string at the bottom, and it tightens it on top. Then the child can have a, a, a more gross grasp on any of the utensils that you're using. This is um, fantastic because it can travel with the child. It's small enough, but it still gives them more of a gross grasp to be able to use it. Um, these are great too when they're working on the smart board. So if they're trying to use the um, pens and pencils that go with the smart boards and they just don't have the ability to, to, to grasp them correctly, they all fit in here too. Um, so this functional hand is, is a great tool for some of those kids who just haven't developed those fine motor skills to be able to hold them or some of the diagnoses that fine motor just becomes really difficult for them. So this is called functional hand. It's a wonderful tool that allows you to be able to, um, part allows the kids to be able to participate in things that they may not have been able to participate independently with before. Um, and it's easy for them to use themselves too. So if, if they are able to set it up or if the aide in the classroom can set it up really quickly without having to, to take a lot of time. Um, so this functional hand is wonderful. One of the things that is great about it too is it gives nice pictures um, in the packaging so you're able to, anybody can really kind of pick it up and be able to use it. So it doesn't have to necessarily be an occupational therapist to be able to set it up for the, the kids that are using it. Um, so again, it's called a functional hand and it's great in the cafeteria, it's great in the art class, music class to be able to hold a mallet if you're using instruments and music. Um, it is universal, so it goes across all settings. Another one of the pieces of equipment that I've used more so in the lower level schools where I was doing more of the ADL pieces is the two minute turtle timer. It's a toothbrush timer um, that when you push the center of the turtle, the fins on the turtle light up. One of the things that's great about this is that each fin represents the quadrant of the mouth. So the two big ones are the, the back, so the left or the right and the back, and the two small ones are the front. The fins light up for 30 seconds, so that's how long you're supposed to brush each quadrant of your mouth. Um, it has sticky tape on the back of it, so you can stick it to the counter, you can stick it to a mirror, you can stick it wherever um, is convenient for the kids. Um, but as, I'm not sure if you're able to see it with this lighting, but as the time goes through the last few seconds, all of the flippers will rotate through so the child knows that it's the end of the two minute timer. Um, this is meant for toothbrushing, but I like to use it too for a, a timer just for kind of um, earned time when the kids have earned time. When they see the lights flashing more quickly, they know that it's the end of the time. So yes, it's purposes for a toothbrush timer, but it's great for just a two minute timer at any point. Um, in any of your sessions. Um, so at this this little guy is great. Sometimes I will put a suction cup on the back instead of the sticky so I can move him with me um, and bring him wherever we are so everybody can see it. Um, so this toothbrush turtle timer is pretty versatile, not just for toothbrushing, can be a great tool for toothbrushing, um, but I use it 
um, across the day in the school as well. So in a general ed class, in my sessions with the kids, um, this little guy travels well with me. Um, Sarah, before so, you move on to the next section, we just had a question about um, how the functional hand can be held um, if they don't have a functional grasp. So is there a way to attach the attach it to the wrist if there's not a functional grasp? So with the functional hand, if you don't have a functional grasp, it will be a little bit more difficult. But there's also these pieces, I'm glad that you asked that, called the easy holds that can attach to it really quite easily. The easy holds have um they're silicone so they're stretchy they have the two pieces on the end that you can attach to it so when you attach it to the easy the functional hands let me attach it real quick um and the thing about the easy holds is they're really just that fast um it then puts a handle on it so you can attach it to the hand of whomever is using it that backwards but um so it becomes a, a part of kind of an extension of your own hand. So the easy hold tools are also available at Therapro and they, excuse me, they come in several sizes. So the blue one works on the um, functional hand, but there are definitely other sizes to work on sippy cups or crayons, if that's what you want to attach it to, or a marker or styluses, whatever you need to kind of give it a little bit of a an extra hold. Um, the packaging with the easy hold shows it attached to several different items. Um, so a stylus for the cell phones, fork and knife, um, sippy cups for the, the little ones. And the back, it shows a superhero so they can um, participate in any play activities that it's great for in preschool for those kids that just don't have that functional grasp yet. They can attach any sort of toy that they're playing with and they can actually engage with their friends. Um, it's great now, especially with COVID and everybody having such um, social difficulties, some of the kids that are coming in because they just haven't been exposed. So it just gives them an extra layer of being able to participate in everything that the, the rest of the class is participating in. Um, so that is the easy hold on the functional hand. Allison, were there any other questions about that ADL section that I can answer before we move forward? Jessa, thank you for explaining. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and if anybody has any questions about any of that, type them in and we'll totally go back to it at the end. Um, the next se section that I have is the sensory section. Um, so the first slide, I don't, I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with um, the Manimo products in particular. Um, but they're 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 weighted animals. So the great thing about these guys is that they're really easy to clean. It's kind of Manimo's claim to fame here. This is their newest member of the Manimo collection. It's a dog. Um, there's two sizes to him. This is the small one, and the bigger guy is significantly bigger. Um, the kids love this because it it's reminds them of an actual dog. When you put it on their lap, the the material that it's made of is nice and soft, so they can actually like pet it and get kind of some soothing um, out of that, as well as it being kind of just a cute, fun little puppy dog. Um, I use these with my geriatric population as well. Um, having a, a weighted animal on their lap provides the same sensory benefits as it does to little kids, but if the, the geriatric person has dementia, it is a nice kind of nostalgic way for them to feel like they have their dog back on their lap from, from years ago. But Manimo has, several different animals that they have in the picture there's the the dolphin is the one that's around the kid's shoulders and that's really meant for around the neck which is nice if that's what the the child is is seeking the blue one is the the lizard there they have as you can see listed several different animals and several different weights um they are easily cleanable and the animals that they have chosen were chosen for a reason so it's great if you're trying to get them to sit still and, and do their their session the these are also great classroom pets if you're trying to go that route um, a dog is a great pet when it's a weighted animal and nothing that you really have to take care of so you can also go about it that way as if you have a self-contained classroom and you're looking for something that can be incorporated into everyday life whether it be the dog or the snake or the frog they all can work through as class pets 
Um, so that is my, the Manimo dog. He's the newest one um, that Manimo has come out with at this point. Um, let's see. Here are some better pictures of the animals that Manimo has. The little chart on the bottom there gives the weight, so you have a better idea as to what would be the best fit for the child that you're working for. All of these charts are available at therapro.com, um, and all of the animals can be ordered there as well. Sensational fun is um activities that you can do that have sensory components that are easy to do kind of in any setting so the thing that i like about these is that they're portable and you can bring them with you so if you are looking for something to do and you have 15 minutes left you can kind of flip through and find an activity or it's something that you can plan for and have the directions there already for them um the great thing about this is they all have a sensory component to it. So um, up on the screen is the leaf hopping one. So it's, it's essentially a sack race. So you get all of the input from that jumping that they would need, but it also puts it into an activity. So you have a, a definite beginning and a definite end to them. Um, one of the other ones that I like to do often with the kids that I have is um, the magic money. Um, it's essentially just rubbing crayons over the money that you have underneath it so the kids can identify what money they have. Um, if it's a higher level student, I'll have them count how much money that they actually have underneath and um, as opposed to just getting that input from, from the rubbing. And this is one of my favorite activities to do with them. Um, just kind of see. And the other one that I like to do, especially at the beginning of the year, um, when you have some new kids and you're trying to figure out kind of where they're at and what, what their awareness is, um, this one is um, kind of the body tracing activity. So you have them lay down and you have them label all of the pieces that, um, that they're aware of that they can label on their own body. It's nice to have the instructions. So if you're running a whole class group, you can give the directions to um, any of the people that are helping you run the group. So you can break them up into smaller groups and be able to, to do three or four people tracing activities at once. Um, again, like I said before, I put them on a ring, they come as just a stack, but it's nice because they're pretty portable. So you can have these activities wherever you're going. Um, if you're traveling from school to school, it doesn't take up much space in your um, either back pocket or, or travel bag. They have some great great ideas as to how to get sensory play into some functional activities. Sensory stories is the next um, activity that I use often. And the great thing about this is that it has stories that go along with all of the things that you might be struggling with. It breaks it down into home, school and community. And as you can see on the, the page listed, it the stories go with it. So when you get the sensory story package, it has everything right there with you. So it's nice because some of the kids that struggle with some of these things in school, um, assemblies, being in lines, the cafeteria, circle time, desk time, eating, moving from classroom to classroom, recess, PE, and the school bus are all um, opportunities that sensory can become a real difficult piece for some of the kids that we have. Um, it gives the sensory story cards that go with it, give little activities that the kids can do to kind of help calm some of their, their sensory needs. So reaching all the way up, I can squeeze my lips together to get some input that way. Um, if they're having difficulty in class, one of them is I can, sorry, I don't know if you can see that with a glare. I can squeeze my knees, so getting that uh, deep pressure input in a way that they can do without having to bother anybody else, any of the classmates. Um, they can just do it without interfering. Um, so these cards go through a lot of different ways that the kids can, I can grasp my elbows and squeeze hard. That's another one that the kids can do right at their desk if they need some input during the day. Um, there are other ones, like this one I can wrap in a soft blanket would be more for home but they have all of the activities that you can do 
I can chew on something special. So if they're looking for that oral input, they know that they have the ability to, to, to do that. Um, the sensory stories, like I said before, is great because it comes all, it's all encompassing and it includes all of those different activities that may be difficult, sorry, difficult for the kids to function within home, school, or their, their own community. Um, the CD that comes with it allows you to print it. So that's great that you have the ability to print out those stories and the kids can have them. They can have one in your classroom. They can have one in their regular classroom. They can have one at home if that's what needs to be. One in the art room if that's where they have difficulty. One um, in the cafeteria with them. So it's definitely allows for you to have multiple copies um, as, as needed for the kids. So that's the sensory stories. And these are the sensory cards that are also available. The next piece is sensory paths. I know that most of you who work in a school probably already utilize these within within your school. And if you don't, these are wonderful. Um, in the school that I'm currently at, they have at least two in every hallway. So two for every grade that um, is at the school. The lower elementary, the kids use these all the time. The, kid, the teachers are great and wonderful about letting them go through them and do all of the activities because they've learned that when they have their sensory needs met, when they go back to learn, they're able to learn better in their classroom. So there are times that some of the teachers just have sensory path breaks where after snack, everybody goes out, runs through the sensory path two or three times, and then they're ready to learn back in um, the class. The, pat, the sensory paths that are available at Therapro um, are Pete the Cat. So it's a a, a nice kind of fictional character that all of the kids are familiar with by the time they get to school. So it's it's familiar to them, the activities that he's doing from the Pete the Cat book. So it's nice that the kids have kind of that connection. They stick right to the floor too. So it's nice when the janitors are sweeping or washing or whatever, they they last for quite some time. So it's nice that they're a, a permanent structure in the in the hallways. Does anybody have any questions about any of the sensory stuff, Allison? Yeah, we have a couple. So going back to the manimal animals, um, somebody's wondering how we would clean them. So they definitely, when you if you have a damp cloth or anything like that, you can spot clean them that way. Um, they can't go in the, the laundry or anything, but they are, when you do spot clean them with the damp cloth or any of the um, light cleaners, they clean up really quite well, quite easily. The, fabric that they're made of, it doesn't adhere, like the typical stains within the day don't adhere to it very well because it's kind of that velour fabric. So it, a lot of the stuff kind of just brushes off more easily than other things. So um, I use just a damp cloth after all of the kids and I spray mine down all the time with just the, the Lysol spray or the, the cleaning spray and let them dry after every child's used them, especially now with the COVID restrictions and such. Um, but they do, they clean out pretty easily. Um, do you happen to know what they are made of uh, on the inside? Um, somebody's wondering if their elementary school has critter issues. Um, I can, I don't know off the top of my head, but let me see. You know, I do not know, but it's definitely something that you can either email Allison and we can figure out for you, or it may be listed on um, the Manimo website too, um, Manimo page on the Therapro website. Um, if I have time at the end, I'll read the tag a little bit more carefully and, and let you know at that point. But right now I'm gonna move on to, to the next piece. Just a question on the cards with the, the card, do the sensory story cards come with the sensory stories? Um, Allison, I don't know if you want to jump in on that one. I don't believe that they do. It's a separate purchase, if I'm correct. Yeah, we can definitely check on that. Um, and then, yeah, the sensory cards come with a sensory story book. I believe there's a couple different sets uh, available at TheraPro, but we can definitely look at that and touch base a little bit more, um, maybe when we pause for the next section. Great. Okay. Any other sensory questions? It for that section. Perfect. Um, so the next thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about are the, the handy guides that Therapro has. I'm not sure that everybody is aware of all of the great resources that is actually on therapro.com. Yes, they sell all of the product, um, but there's a ton of free resources that are so useful for handouts for parents, for handouts for teachers, 
for just a, a guide for yourself, just to, you have a kid in mind, but you don't know exactly what product that you want to go through, um, check out the handy guides. Chances are that there's a guide for what you're looking for. So some of the guides that are up on therapro.com are pencil grip guides, chew guides, there's a game guide, a fidget guide, writing accessories, evaluations, assistive tech, and an easy hold guide. Um, so they, the guides are printable pages that you can use as a resource. So this is the easy hold guide. I know that I showed it with the functional hand before, but these are all the different um, things that the functional guide, um, I'm sorry, the easy hold can attach itself to. So if you're wondering, hey, I've got a, a student that's really looking to hold on to those Crayola markers, let me look at the handy guide and see which one is most appropriate for that. So it would be the green one at this point in time. Um, it's amazing how many things that the easy hold can actually attach to um, and having kind of this one page quick reference is a lifesaver when you're trying to figure out which color goes with what you're looking for. Um, the next handy guides that I use all the time, especially for um, my ASD kids are the chew guides. There's quite a few of them listed on the website, but if you kind of know the kid that you're looking for, if it's a girl or a boy, what they're interested in, what color, the handy guides give a lovely description as to what shoes work best for what kind of chewer. So we have the jewelry up there. We have the mind your P's and Q's for the younger kids. Um, the guides are broken down into different sections. So shoes that are worn around the neck is one of the tabs that you can click on. Handheld shoes, shoes worn on the wrist, um, shoes that are on a holder. They go through every shoe that, not probably not that's made, but every shoe that Therapro has to offer. So some of the Choose for the bigger kids that have the dog tag shoes. It says if it's a heavy chewer, if it's a light chewer, which one that you need to use. Um, some of the wearable jewelry that's available for the older kids. Um, this one is for the light chewers. As you can see at the top, it's um, broken down into um, light, medium, firm, and baby. So it, all of the pieces that you might be looking for for a specific person, you can go through kind of pick it out and see what's available for them. Um, oftentimes I get questions from parents, like I wanna be able to provide a chew for my child at home, but I don't know which one to do. This is a great um, resource that you can either guide them to Therapro to go look at or print it out and send it home for them so that they can look to see what's available to see which ones that they think that their child might be most, might benefit the most from. One of the, the next handy guide that I use often is um, it's a find your fidget tool. This is one of the ones that I like to use um, for parent education and teacher education. It gives examples of different fidgets that would be used in different kind of opportunities or um, for different reasons. So it has all of the different fidgets that are school friendly. Most of them on here are school friendly, so they're not the loud ones. They're not ones that are going to be distracting, but it gives an option, kind of a, a menu, if you will, of fidgets for the kids to use. This one is for calming and organizing. There's another one for alerting activities. So you can have, you can show the, the teachers, the parents, the difference between an, uh, a fidget that's gonna kind of alert and get somebody into a learning mode and the fidget that's going to kind of calm somebody and provide focus for them so that they can attend to whatever task is available. So it's nice that they're both there so you have the option for one kid because we know not all fidgets work for every, every child. So these are ones that I would typically send home to a parent so they can see the difference between an alerting fidget and a, and a calming fidget. Um, the pencil grip guide um, is broken down into comfort, positioning, and sensory needs. So it gives a variety of options for the students to use for different reasons. Um, I will you pull this out too with the, the kids because sometimes you'll give them a grip and they'll be like, I don't want that one, I don't like it. And you can have the conversation as to like, what are you, what grip are you, what are we using the grip for? Are we using it so you can hand get put in a better position so when you write it's not fatiguing? then let's look at this red spot. Is there a grip that you'd like to try out here? Um, obviously using your professional judgment as to which one would be best, but it 
it's nice that it breaks it down into the different categories for um, the people who don't necessarily know the grips. And with there's so many grips available, it gives a nice organization to them. Um, the next one is um, the writing tool or accessory piece. So these are all of the some of the products that are available to help with writing. What kind of tool do we need to be as successful as we possibly can? Um, writing tools for comfort, accessories for positioning, um, writing tools for positioning, and writing tools for sensory needs. So it breaks it down into the categories that you're most likely are gonna come across. Again, a great resource for you to hand out to parents, teachers, other professionals within the building that may may just not understand why you chose one tool for another or know that there are more options available for a specific need. Um, so definitely check out therapro.com um, for their guides and reference sheets. Um, there are definitely more up there that I didn't go over today. Take a look at them, use them to your advantage, print them out, give them out as handouts. Um, it's a nice way that our profession is kind of condensed into a little reference sheet for everybody to, to be able to understand more of what we do um, and why we do it. All right, before you move on to the next section, I got a couple of answers here. So okay. um, our Manimo animals are made with non-toxic polythylene beads. So not a, uh, I know some of those are kind of with those pellets that the critters like. So this looks like it is not that um, issue. Um, and for the story card, story book. So the story cards will show you a visual of tools. So it's a visual reminder, not the story. The stories are separate on a PDF or um, CD. So and you can actually get those as a PDF download. Um, and then, Looks like we have some handwriting questions, but I'll let you go through the handwriting section first, and then we'll ask those questions. Perfect. So the next section that I'm going to go through is um, the fine motor section. Um, the secondhand therapies is one of my absolute favorite decks that I have, and the reason being is because it's activities that you can do with things that are just around. Um, I use this all the time when I was doing virtual therapies. I would pick an activity, kind of give a heads up for what the next week was so the kids and parents at home could find these things at home and have it ready for our next session. So the secondhand therapies is um, a deck cards that have, um, ooh, that's not what I was looking for. Um, that have pictures that go along with it and then the activity is on the back. So this one is the alphabet scavenge and it asks you to get magazines, cereal boxes, scissors, colored pencils, glue, paper, and a glue stick. So you have to go through and find the different letters. So with my virtual kids, I would ask them to bring a magazine or a newspaper to the next session and we would go through and say, how many G's can you find? Can you cut them out? Can you put them on, like glue them onto the paper? So it has multiple kind of target areas in one activity. Um, there's several different ones. Um, cutting a slot in a box to be able to put it into, I know it's stuff that we do with our kids all the time, but having them actually make the box to put the slot in gives them more investment in the activity that you're trying to get them to do. Um, old fashioned poppets with the bubble wrap. This one's a coffee can with a button. So asking them to collect some buttons and get a coffee can, have them with their parent cut a slit in the hole, um, sorry, a slit in the top and decorate the can so they can use those kind of pincer grasp to be able to feed the buttons into the hole. You can make your own leather lacing um, tasks at home just with some cardboard and some yarn. So have them draw a picture of whatever that they wanna cut out, whether it's a heart or the outline of a dog or whatever it is that they're interested in. Um, Usually a, a parent would have to help with the hole punch of the uh, holes with an um, X-Acto knife and they have their own lacing activities that they can do at home. Some of the ones that I do all the time with the kids from this secondhand therapy deck is um, an egg carton with stickers in the bottom of it. And I like to use the, you can use the strawberry hullers to pick up any pom-pom or any small object. We, Great with the strawberry colors as well as 
um, any type of tongue or tweezers that you may have. But having the kids help construct it with the stickers on the bottom, you can do numbers and letters, however many egg cartons you have, um, mix it up, do whatever you need to do to have the kids be vested. I know some of the boys like the superheroes in it. So can you feed Spider-Man five pom-poms with the strawberry color? So then the Spider-Man stickers, you put five in each one. Um, but this is just made from an egg carton that one of the students and I made together. Um, another activity that I did with the students from the secondhand therapies is kind of the button box. Same idea as the coffee cup. Um, it's an old tissue box that we cut one end of it out. There's different size slots in the top. Sorry, I don't know if you can see it. In the top, in the sides. So each slot is a different diameter and width. So some of the buttons will fit through all of them. Some of the buttons you have to find the right slot to go through. Having them decorate it gives a little bit more investment in the activity that you're doing. So the slots that you put on it correspond to whatever size um, buttons you have for the kids to use. Yes, this took a couple of sessions to get through to actually construct it all and then to be able to use it, but having the kids have that vestment in it was great, especially during our virtual session. So when you have the parents that are willing to um, participate and help, um, activities from this particular deck were wonderful. Um, and I'm not sure how many of you are still having to do virtual um, sessions or if you do virtual sessions all the time, but secondhand therapies is definitely um, a set of cards that can be used from home because 90% of the materials that are asked to be taken are all things that you can find straight from home. So love, love, love secondhand therapies. Um, Color forms are another one of my favorite ones that are starting to come back. I know color forms were big when I was little, um, but they're they're coming back kind of full force now. One of the things that is great about color forms is they're really kind of trendy. So you can find color forms with any of the new characters that will motivate, especially the younger kids. This happens to be the Daniel Tiger one that I use with the kids. The great thing about these is that they're easily cleanable. Um, and they can be reused. Um, the Miss Weather is up on the screen. I love to do that one as a whole group kind of lesson. So if you're going into a preschool, you have lots of kids in the same class, or you're doing a sensory motor group, um, it's great to have the whole class interact with it. They can, peeling off the stickers, putting it on, saying, does that coat really belong where, where you put it, having them fix it right on the spot, allows all of those fine motor skills to be um, kind of reinforced. I know that the Daniel Tiger one, the kids love. I have a Paw Patrol one that the kids love um, and a Care Bears one that the kids do too. There is a Color Forms game as well. Um, I'm not sure that that is one that I use when I have a group, especially a group of boys. Anytime you can put anything that works on skills into game format, the boys tend to be a little bit more attentive to it. So Color Forms, the restickable stickers, it's awesome. Can be a warm up, can be a cool down. It can be a, a, a kind of a carrot. Hey, look, I've got your favorite character. Let's go play with it. Um, color forms are definitely making a comeback and I love them for the fine motor aspect of them, as well as the visual perceptual piece. Can you put Daniel Tiger on top of the rock? Can you put, I don't even know all of the names of them and I should at this point, but can you put this kitty on top of the purple chair? following direction is great um, for this as well. These are also really good. I don't know how many of you um, do co-treatments, but I love to take the color forms to my co-treatments with the speech pathologist. Um, you can get a lot of language out of it, the following direction, the receptive and the expressive language, as well as working on that fine motor piece of peeling and sticking all of the, the stickers where they need to be. So this is one of my favorite co-treat kind of back pocket activities. Fine Motor Olympics. Um, so the Fine Motor Olympics was designed by an occupational therapist, which is um, probably one of the reasons why I use it so often because the person who designed it um, understands kind of what, what goes into OT and how to use it with kind of the younger population within the school. Um, the Fine Motor Olympics has all different activities um, that can be done right at 
at school. So a lot of them use blocks, a lot of them use sticks, glue, crayons, um, but it gives different activities to be able to, um, you have to complete one to be able to move, to move on to the next one. So the manual that goes along with it gives the more detailed instructions for the activities that go on the cards. One of the things that is good about this is that it is able to be kind of graded real easily. So if you want a shorter activity, you pick out one of the fine motor Olympics cards. If you are looking to fill a little bit more time where you have kids that can work through things really quickly, then you can pick out three or four of the activities that the kids can kind of work on to be able to um, enhance their skills. The great thing about these cards is, is that right on the card, it tells you what the activity is working on. So this particular card um, you, where, is working on pentagraph, opposition, and open web space, and separation of the two sides of the hand. So you can go through before you sit down with the kids, pick out what skills that you want to focus on for that particular day, and pull up the activities that work on those skills. Um, and just give those activities as the choices to do. So having that little kind of cheat sheet in the corner is really helpful um, to be able to really hone in on the skills that the particular kids that you're working with um, need help on. So fine, that is the fine motor Olympic. Um, this fine motor skills in the classroom, I know I spoke about it in my last one, but I use it all the time. Um, it's great because it can be used as a screen tool and a remediation tool for an entire class. Um, it gives the, I'm trying to, once you've gone through the classroom and figured out what the weaknesses are, you, the whole last chapter of this is the remediation skills. So if you have a, three or four kids in the same class that are working, need to work on the same skills, it gives you um, suggestions and handouts as to what to do. So this particular one is um, writing at your desk, so it's getting ready to write. So it gives you the activity and what you need to work on to get ready to write as a whole class. It's something that can be done as a whole class, and it's these things can be done by people who are not necessarily occupational therapists. So if you go in and you notice that the kids are not in good writing positions to be able to write when the LA block comes in, print, make a copy of this, give it to the classroom teacher so she has the, the tools that she needs to be able to say, hey, you know what, the best writing position for you before we go down to write this essay is this. Let's look at the worksheet and see what we can do to get into a better writing position. Um, it gives all sorts of um, activities to kind of remediate some of the activities that an entire class may be struggling with. So holding the pencil, positioning paper for writing, having this book with the resources to be able to copy and give out to the teachers prevents a lot of unnecessary referrals because you can kind of nip it in the bud beforehand and give the resources so that everybody in the class can benefit, not just the kids that you're, you're working on more specifically. I use this book all the time. So it's fine motor skills in the classroom. Um, star spacers. So these are great for the older kids who are having trouble with their letters sizing and spacing as a lot of them do, especially now seeing more and more having being taught virtually for so long with COVID. Um, the star spacers are plastic, pieces that have a star at one side, which provides the space that the student needs to put between the words, and it has a cutout. So the student has to keep the word that they're writing within a specific space. It gives the tactile and visual cue of the space that they need to be able to write in. Um, these are great for the older kids where the space is a little bit smaller than what you would start out with in a, a pre-K one classroom. These are great for two, second grade, third grade. Um, these can be cleaned when they get the pencil mark or the mar markers over it because of the, the plastic piece of it. So these um, spacers are a great tool that the kids can have kind of in their desk. They're kind of non-conspicuous. They're not really, they don't shout, hey, look at me, I've got something different. The kids are not oftentimes resistant to using them because they are small and they can just pull them out when they need to, to work on their writing. Um, my son, 
has difficulty with this and he uses these star spacers at home all the time when we work on his writing. Um, so I, I have kind of a soft spot in my heart for them just because my, my own kid who has difficulty um, uses these. So those are the star spacers. They come in a five pack. So when you order a pack, there's five of them in there. Um, and the kits, there are pros kits. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this, but one of the great things that I love about buying a Therapro kit, kit is that you get a variety of things for for the, the students or the multiple students that you're working with. Um, it's great because you never know what's gonna work for the kid. You might think that one particular grip is gonna be what works and you hand it to them and they hate it. When you have these grip kits or the pencil grip samplers, um, it you have several different options to try all kind of together in one kit. They have pencil grip kits. There's two different grip kits that have different size pencils, different shape pencils, different grips all within the same kit. So this particular kit has small pencils, large pencils, triangle pencils, circle pencils with crossover grips, the sterno grips. It, has a, a little golf pencil in it too for the itty bitty hands. There's some grips that are purely for comfort and other grips that are for more positional pieces all in the same, excuse me, same pencil grip kit. So definitely take a look at the different kits that are put together. One of my favorite kits that Therapro has is this hand tool kit. Partially not, I love this kit because of the the toolkit guy that's inside of it, as well as the pieces that belong in it. So in the hand tool kit is a hauler, a top, um, some grips, some pencils, different pom-poms, um, clothespins, but this hand tool kit guide is probably the most invaluable piece to the whole thing because it gives you um, tips on how to use each of the pieces of the toolkit in it. So it's nice to have the reasoning behind, especially when you're trying to explain it to a parent. So being able to have this um, guide to use when you're talking to another parent or another professional in school that may not understand why, why did you put the elastic band on my kid's pencil? Oh, I put it on because here's a little handout that um, you can use to remember why or to use it with another student. Um, so this guide that comes with the hand tool kit is is pretty awesome. Um, there are other kits also available on Therapro. These two just happen to be the ones that I use most often. Any questions about that section, Allison? We do. All right. So any recommendations? Uh, do you have recommendations for a student that has undiagnosed neurological hand tremors, which impact their writing skills? Any recommendations for weighted pencils to increase the quality of written output? So on one of our handy guides um, has kind of different tools that can be used for different writing activities for kids that have different abilities and disabilities. So I'd definitely suggest taking a look at that um, handy guide to get some ideas. The weighted pencils are on there, any of the wrist weights, those type of things are all listed on that handy guide. So definitely take a take a peek at that handy guide at therapro.com. A couple of questions on where to actually find that handy guide. So I believe, and Allison, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a handy guide tab on the homepage of Therapro. If you can't find it, you can always type in the search bar, okay. handy guides, and they'll pop up. Great. And then just a couple comments. Uh, somebody saying they love the star spacers and uh, fine motor Olympics is a great tool for kindergarten boxes for teachers to give the children to do as a small group. PTA can help to make the boxes with enough materials for four to five. So thanks for the um, great comments, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that you. I'm glad that you guys are using the same kind of activities that I'm using. It's nice to to hear that there are other people out there that are doing the same activities that I'm doing with my kids. It makes you feel like you're at least on the right track. Any further questions, Allison? Last one. Any suggestions on handwriting using a mouth stick? I actually do not. I have not come across a student who needs a mouth stick in my 
years as a therapist. Um, but if any of you out there have any suggestions, feel free to type those in the, the question box and we can definitely circle back to them at the end. If anybody has any, we'll definitely throw it back out there so you guys can, can try whatever other people have tried. Was that it? That's it for that section. All right. Um, games, one of the most kind of sought after activities for the kids that, that come down. Um, this letter treasure hunt game is a game that I use all the time, especially as a co-treatment with um, my SLPs because it allows for the fine motor output to write down all of the letters that the kids have to come across, as well as that verbal piece of all of the sounds that the letters make. Um, putting the letters together for words. This game um, can be used in its entirety and you can also kind of cut it down so its pieces are can be played in shorter amounts. Um, the captain's log is where the kids write down all of the letters that they fall on. The object of the game is to find the treasure at the end. Um, this letter treasure hunt game is definitely a favorite, especially with the boys that can kind of be a little bit tricky to find some more of those activities to do without having it be arts and crafts that they don't necessarily love to do. So check out this letter treasure hunt um, game. It's definitely one that I use all the time, especially with my boys. Trunks is a game that incorporates movement um, as well as memory. So this is definitely a favorite, it gets the kids up and moving. They have to remember the different activities that go along with each piece of the elephant trunk. The part, the object of the game is to be able to build an entire trunk and remember all of the movements that go with it. So this is the, the first piece of the trunk and they have to act out playing the piano. So can they get the kids to be able, the other kids in the group to know that they're playing the piano and then can they remember it? Um, other activities that come along with it, whistling, snapping, bouncing a basketball. This is the middle part of the trunk. Um, and then the end part of the trunk is here someplace. Um, but this is an awesome game to get everybody up and moving. Um, OT and PT can co-treat with this as well because of the gross motor pieces that, that go along with it. So definitely check, check out trunks. It's one of the kind of favorite movement games that gets the kids focused at the same time so it doesn't get them out of control because they have to remember each piece as they they move on if they want to be able to put their whole trunk together and and win the game you can grade this by how many pieces of the trunk each child actually has to remember to put together so if you're working with the little kids two pieces of the trunk is all that you have to remember if you're working with three four five you have to get three four or five pieces of the trunk in sequential order that you remember. So um, this is one that's great for all ages across the board. You can definitely go through and pull out some of the activities if you know it's gonna be a trigger for some of the kids or if there's specific activities that you want them to be able to do. Make sure that those are in the pile of, of cards that they choose from. Um, so this is trunks. It's a really fun one. Like I said, um, physical therapists like to use it with us too. So that's a good one if you have a, a, a co-treatment that way too. Um, I know that co-treatments were used a lot and then kind of faded out, but I think with the appropriate activities and the appropriate kids, co-treatments can be super beneficial for, for the kiddos that we're working with. Novanops. This typically is thought of as a speech and language game. However, I love it as an occupational therapist. Novanops stands for noun, verb, noun, and... I forget what the end of it is. Noun, verb, noun, and phrase. Sorry, ooh, that was bad. Um, you have to construct a sentence using a noun, a verb, a noun, and a phrase. All of the sentences are silly sentences that you come up with, but they're appropriate. They're not inappropriate for school. So when you put them all together, um, the kids then have to write the sentence. That's the part that I like the best is the writing piece. Um, if you're using this with a SLP, they like the parts of speech, putting the sentence together, um, sentence formation, formulation piece. So this game is, it comes in a, just a little um, tin for the cards to go in so it fits in your back pocket. I use this when I'm traveling from school to school. Um, the sentences can be four 
cards along. And if you want to make a complex sentence, you can add more pieces to it. Um, this game definitely gets the kids writing without really thinking that they're writing because the sentences are so silly. Um, and have every single time they play it and put the sentences together, the sentences are different. So you're never coming up with the same sentences um, that they had done in a previous round. Um, so this Novanauts is one of my go-to games, um, especially with the older kids because they like the nonsense sentences. Rush Hour Junior is one of my favorite games, although it's really difficult to find at the moment with everything, um, with shipping and all of that. But Rush Hour is definitely that um, figuring out where I'm going to put each car and how I'm going to get them undone. They have the cards so you can pre-make the game so you can kind of level it that way. Easy up to really difficult. The kids really love this one. And it's definitely one that I recommend for my parents to use at home too, because it's a, a game that the kids build skill without really kind of realizing that they're working on on skills at the same time. They have a, a regular rush hour too that has more pieces to it. I prefer the junior because typically in a session I'm trying to get through more than one activity. Um, so the junior is just big enough and has enough time to be able to play one or two cards and then move on. The rush hour regular game is much larger, has many more pieces to it. Anybody have any questions about any of those games? Yeah, well, a couple, uh, maybe not necessarily related to the game, but one, um, who pays for the consumable? So I guess looking at questions about funding, where we're getting the money for these kind of products. Um, so most of the products, uh, most of the things, like if you were using like a secondhand therapy type thing, are just products um, that I would have collected kind of put out a email at the beginning of the year, like, hey, if you have any FDA cartons, send them my way, any of the, the pop things, send them my way. Um, or at the beginning of the year, I generally send out a PO with kind of some of the, the pieces that I use over and over and over again. Um, if it's a virtual thing, some of the, especially with the secondhand therapies, it's a lot of the stuff that you can just find at home. Um, but I guess it would kind of depend on the school that you're at and what the purchasing policy is and how much money you have to spend at that, at that moment. Okay, and she's saying consumables is chewies, pencil scripts, et cetera, so. Um. Oh, okay. Um, so typically um, when I buy any of the chewies or grips or anything like that, it's coming out of the, whatever budget I have from school. Usually if it's further in the year and my budget is gone, um, they'll find money from a grant or something like that to be able to to purchase that. If it's something that the parents are going to use at home also, sometimes I've had success saying, hey, you know what, I know that they can use this at home. If you've bought some, can you send them in for school so that they can use them at school as well? So a combination of either the, the school or um, family contribution is what I've had the most success with. Okay, another question on the um, age for trunks. So question about trunks, can it be played with preschoolers? Yeah. Um, trunks can be played with preschool if you kind of preview the cards. So some of the activities like snapping, I'm not going to expect a, a preschooler to be able to do. But if you're asking them to act out bouncing a basketball, those are definitely skills that they have. So it's one of those things that if you have the ability to go through and pre-screen the cards that you're going to put out and play with the little kids, then it can absolutely be used with the younger kids as well. All right, just a couple more comments. Uh, blackboards can be used instead of crayons in the pirate game. So letter treasure hunt um, using a blackboard instead go. of. And then uh, somebody says they love fresh hour. So just a couple awesome. of comments there. That's all the questions for that section. That's all the questions for that one. Perfect. I thought my stuff was all within reach, but I, my arms are shorter than I thought. Um, the last, not, I don't know if it's the last question, but one of the, the next things that we're going to do is handwriting. Um, one of the things that Therapro has that I definitely, definitely take advantage of is their writing and learning paper. Um, they have paper that's raised line paper. They have paper that's highlighter paper. They have packs of paper. So you have the progression from really big spaces to much smaller lines. Definitely, definitely take a look at the writing and learning paper that they have available um, at Therapro. Some of the paper that I've used, they have this particular paper. This is kindergarten paper with blue at the bottom, 
also with yellow at the bottom so they can see the difference between a small letter and a tall letter. Um, they have it with faces so that they can have a picture that goes along with the sentences or the words that they're writing. Um, the highlighter paper is has big spaces like that in kindergarten, but they also have much smaller, narrower paper for the older kids who may still need that visual cue as to where the midline of the writing is to keep the lowercase letters at the bottom and the capital letters at the top. Um, they have these raised lined alphabet papers. So I know it's hard to see over the computer, but these A's here are actually raised off the paper. So you can keep your pencil line in between the letters that are there. And there's that tactile physical cue if you go over the, the bump. So the kids can practice the letter formations with a tactile cue of, hey, wait a minute, I just went over that line. I'm not supposed to, let me get back into where I need to be. So this is, they have capital letters, the whole alphabet, they have lowercase letters, and they have numbers that have those raised lines for that tactile cue. Here's a sample of the lowercase letters. Um, and they also have cursive letters. I know that cursive is kind of a dying art, but I, for some of those kids, the cursive just works a little bit better. And they have the lowercase cursive as well. I want to show you the numbers because the numbers I think are really great too, because a lot of the times numbers get kind of forgotten about when letter formation is what's thought about kind of forefront but number formation is just as important as the letter formation to a lot of our kids. Um, they have difficulty with the letters as well as the numbers. They also have the raised pictures. So the blue part on the apple is raised up off the paper. You can actually feel a, a bump on the paper. It's got the letter practice at the bottom. It's got the coloring practice at the top. These are great for great tools for if you have a coloring goal and you're trying to have them color within a within the lines within a certain amount a certain percentage these are great to be able to kind of measure those goals because you can they can physically feel it and you can see when they've gone outside of the the um the tactile line there um for some of the visual perceptual pieces there's raised mazes so the lines on these mazes are just like the lines on the letter so it gives that tactile input when they've crossed over a line that they're not supposed to to cross over. So this is great for when you're working with that visual perceptual piece on um, that visual motor piece of, of kind of controlling that pencil through a given path. Um, they also have raised line paper for writing. So these papers here, the um, there's a box around the red that's raised so that they you have that tactile cue of like, I've gone too far to the top or too far to the bottom. So they have that writing paper that has that tactile cue as well. My favorite, let me see, they have small lines as well. My go-to raised line paper is usually this one. Um, I like this for kind of first grade, second grade, if the kids are having difficulty, it gives the tactile cues for the top and the bottom. And it also has that visual cue for the space as well as the dotted line for the middle. Oftentimes the teachers are using dotted line paper in the classroom, so these are the lines that the kids are most familiar with using. So if you're trying to provide something in the classroom that the kids, so they don't stand out, they don't look any different than any of the other kids, these are the papers that I have the most success with. But I love that it gives that visual as well as that tactile feedback cue of having the raised line. The raised line paper goes up as small as just regular notebook paper as well. So it's definitely something if the child benefits from that can grow with them and go all the way through middle school, high school to put this in a, a binder and be able to have that tactile cue. Um, there's also raised lined graph paper. So this is my favorite too when you're trying to line up for the long, um, long division, multiple digit multiplication, it just gives it organizational piece that some of the kids still require to be able to line up the numbers, keep the numbers within a given space so that their numbers aren't so huge or, or, or so little. It just gives that nice kind of guideline for them to be able to work out math problems with more ease. As I said before, they have um, their stage right is kind of staged paper. So it starts at the stage one, sorry, I'm backwards 
stage one um, for when they're really little and it works all the way up um, to stage six. So it's just the, the single line paper. This works in a progression and it's nice when you buy the packet because as the kids grow with it, you have the next step when they're ready for it. You don't have to kind of search for, oh, okay, now they're, they, they've mastered this, where do I need to go next? This just has the stages right there that you can work through with it, um, with the student. And they can see that they've progressed from stage one through stage six, which is nice. Um, so the highlighter paper, the raised line paper are definitely um, my favorites and my go-tos when those the kids have some formation issues or visual perceptual difficulties when they're trying to write um, in the paper that's provided for them in the class. Uh, one of my other favorite kind of tools and tricks, especially when you walk into a classroom and you're going to do in-class service and they're working on a worksheet and there's no lines on the worksheet and the kids just lost because they have no kind of organizational ability and they don't know where to put their letters or their numbers because there's nothing there for them to do. Legi liners provide a quick solution for that. So the Legi liners have our kind of self-stamping ink pads that you run across the paper and it will provide the lines for you. They have dotted line ones, they have um, single line ones, they also have um, ones without dotted lines in the middle, so much smaller lines. They have music staffs. They have so many different options as to what the, the student is familiar with. Um, if you can see up on that screen there, they even have boxes so that you can put your letters and numbers in specific boxes if that's what you're working on. This allows you to kind of adapt any worksheet really quickly. Um, I always have my ledger liner in my pocket when I'm doing in-class services because you never know kind of what form the paper or the activity is going to be that comes out that the teacher has given and this allows you to be able to just uh, modify the worksheet that the, the child's given without kind of making any fuss so it gives the kids a sense of success that they were able to complete the worksheet that everybody else was doing um, and it doesn't cause any ruckus in the classroom to be able to modify it m modify it for them. So there's a ton of different ledgy liners, so definitely take a look to see which one you think that you would would you would need. Um, they are refillable too, so once you run out of ink, they have the refillable pods that you can just put the ink right back in them. So when you find your favorite ledgy liner that you use all the time, you don't have to buy a whole new one, you can just get the um, refillable ink pods for them. So these ledgy liners are great for in-class services. Um, one of my favorites. Better boards. Um, so the better boards are the slant boards that are lightweight plastic. They have the clips on them, so you can clip the paper to it. Um, they have the Velcro, the feet at the bottom of the Velcro, so they can be put together, taken apart. They fold down really small, so if a child needs it, it can fit right in their desk or the pile on the back of the classroom. Doesn't take up very much space. They're really lightweight. Um, you can also attach a clipboard to it too. If the clips at the top are a little difficult for the kids to maneuver, they require a little bit of strength to be able to pull them off and clip it back on. So um, this is definitely one of my favorite slam boards if you're gonna buy a, a, a pre-done pre -done slam board. So it puts them at um, a 20 degree angle, which is pretty ideal for most of the kids that are, are learning to write. So these better boards come in black and red. Um, like I said before, I love them because they're light and they are collapsible. So the kids can put them right in their desk um, or pile them in a small pile in the back of the classroom and they don't take up so much space as those big clunky plastic um, slant boards that oftentimes we think of when we hear the word slant board. So these better boards are, are great. Any questions about those? Uh, just a couple comments. So, love the raised line pictures for coloring and mazes. Um, but a question: Is the raised line paper reusable, uh, i.e., dry erase or one-time use? Um, it is not reusable, and it's hard to put. I know I've tried to put it in like the the sleeve, so you can erase it, but it takes away some of that tactile input that the kids really need. Um, so, it is more or less a one-time use type of um, thing. Once the kids get used to it and they don't need it anymore, um, then you can just photocopy it and the, the raised line is not there anymore, obviously, but 
when you're using the raised line, it really is a, just a one-time use thing. All right, another comment question here. So somebody saying they just found the ledgy liner today and can't wait to um, get them. So, but somebody saying, can you show the size difference with the ledgy liners? Um, so the ledgy liners, they, they come in all different sizes. Um, the, that one's a music line. You don't necessarily want that one. The, this ledgy liner is a two, I don't know if you can see. Um, it provides two lines at a time. Um, I would say this size is about first grade, second grade um, with the two lines, but they have single line as well for the older kids. That just is like a college ruled. I don't know if you can see, can you see the black lines on that? Sorry, there we go. Um, so it's a much narrow, more narrow line that is provided. These, This particular one goes better if you're doing like the, the Learning Without Tears program because it's just the two double line, but can also be used with the older kids that still need the line spaces. They have a variety of different um, lines that their ledgy liners can produce. So definitely take a look at all of them before you decide which one you think will be best for you. I know that I had said before that they even have like the music lines. Can you see that? It's a five line staff. Um, if you have somebody that has really great pencil control, those lines are really small to be able to do it. Or if you're working on kind of vertical numbers, you can use this um, music staff as well. So there's a, a variety of different lines that Legi Liner has um, for purchase that you can use for the different levels, depending on what your specific caseload requires. All right, there's a lot of people who love the Legi Liners, getting a lot of those comments come in. Um, they would be, a, so another couple comments, they would be great to adapt graphic organizers. Um, uh, and with the Legi Liners, you can refill the ink, and if so, can you refill the link ink, and if so, how? Yes, you can refill the ink. Um, it comes with little pods, there's a hole in the side, and you squeeze the ink into the, the little hole in the side with the pods that they that you can purchase. Um, have so you, I, oops, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, just another, have you ever tried laminating the raised lines for use purposes? Yes, and it, it really doesn't work. It, the you lose the the height of the line so it kind of defeats the purpose of having the raised line definitely feel free to give it a shot but in my experience i have found that it has not been as successful as just the paper with the raised lines they don't get that the same feedback that they do without it being laminated hey a couple um, more comments. is it comments or questions because we're running out of time and i just want to show a couple more. all right go for it then we'll save the comments for later <laughs> Perfect. So just a couple of the fun toys that I found really awesome. So this Philo tablet, um, I love this. It's gradable for the kids. Um, it uses shoestring and kind of a Velcro type manner to be able to make different pictures. So it comes with pre-designed um, activities that you can do. The thing that I love about this is that each color on the string is how much you should be able to make with just one string. The strings that you have get loaded into a pen and the, the strings stick to this board like um, Velcro. So it's really cool. You can make your own shapes, you can make your own letters, you can follow the booklet that they have given to you. Um, you load the string into the pen, which is a task in and of itself. If the kids can do that, then you're definitely on the right track. The string sticks to the board. Now I'm going to make a liar out of myself. It sticks to the board. You can make different shapes with it. Anytime you press it down to the board, it'll stick. So I just quickly made a little house there. It will stick. The kids can make whatever um, designs that they want. On the back of it is a dry erase grid. So if you have more advanced kids and they're trying to to make the examples that are provided in the grid. So it's, oops, sorry, upside down. Um, so it comes with a dry erase marker that you can also use this to kind of make some of those drawings with. Love this, especially for those kids that are higher in grade, lower in level, because it's one of those activities that doesn't look like babyish, but can be graded to a much lower level and a higher level. If you have a mixed group, it's a really good one to use. Um, oh, sorry, did I, I flipped it on there. So that's the Philo tablet. Um, the, this My First Dino is one that I love to use with my preschoolers, the really little kids. The great thing about this is that they're magnetic. So in the middle of these is a stick that's magnetic. You can 
mix and match whatever dinosaurs you want. You can pile them up on top of each other. The magnet holds them together. So it's when they put it together, it doesn't fall apart. And it you need a little bit of strength to pull them apart when you're going to make your next dinosaur. So it also works on kind of that hand strengthening piece. Um, any of the Smart Max kits will work with other Smart Max kits. So they're I have the that magnetic piece to them. This is great and fun for the the little kids that um, are on the caseload. Um, rock crayons, I'm sure that you guys are all aware of them, but this particular set has so many different colors in it and the little sizes are great for the little hands. These are made from wax. So if it does end up, I mean from soy, I'm sorry, soy wax. So if they end up in the mouths of the kids, it's really no big deal. Um, this Fanta Color Junior is another one that I like that can be braided. It's little pegs that you put on the different colors to the different pieces. Um, this I love for preschool, kindergarten age, um, and they can make their own pictures as well. It takes a little effort to put the, the pieces into the different slots. Um, and then the last one I think real quick before I run out of time is the 3D Feel and Find. So this does have um, the boards that you can put the pieces into. So when you asking them to put their hands in, you can show them this is what you're looking for. You don't have to use it. You can say, hey, can you pull out a cow? Can you pull out a duck? Um, works on all sorts of great skills. This is definitely one that can be graded for a variety of levels as well. I know I'm running out of time. Allison, are there any last questions? Just gonna give a sec. Let me see if anybody's rolling through. Uh, just more comments about loving the crayon rocks and using them in preschool class today. Um, and looks like that may we have kind of covered the questions as we're going. Awesome. I know I went through those last couple of products really quickly. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I can give you my email now if you guys want to take it down. It's Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at therapro.com. Again, that's Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, at therapro.com. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have.